This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we're on Chelek Dalid, part four, chapter Vav, uh, chapter six, the order of the day, Seder Hayom Batfila, and paragraph seven, which deals with Tefillin. Ach inyan hatfilin hu yoter gadol minatzitzit harve. This idea, the concept of tefillin, is much greater than tzitzit. It's interesting. Tzitzit is essentially a garment, right? We we wear our tzitzit into the bathroom. It's not an issue, right? The talit. Good, Steve. Do you hear us now? Uh oh. <laughs> He's on mute. Eve, do you hear us? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so tzitzit is essentially a garment. If you're wearing a four-cornered garment, then it needs to have the tzitzit strings on the four corners, right? We wear our, our, our tzitzit into the bathroom. Our talit feasibly we could wear into the bathroom we don't since it is designated Uzi, if you can just mute those we're getting bounce back oh, wow. talking, right but it's the the the, the, the talit since it is designated for davening so we don't wear it into the bathroom but feasibly we could the tefillin have kedusha themselves the tefillin cannot be worn into the bathroom when a when when a talit is no longer usable, it can be discarded. We do it in a, in a respectful manner, but it can be discarded. It's called a devar mitzvah, a matter of a mitzvah. Tefillin is kedushat, is a davar shebe kedusha. Tefillin, if they can no longer be used, they have geniza. They need to be buried. Tefillin cannot just be discarded. So the idea of tefillin, as he says, is a whole level above that of the tzitzit. Buhu, and what is this idea? Ki natana bar Yisbarach li Yisrael. God, the, the creator, gave to Israel. Shiyu mamshichim aleihem hemshech mamish. We have an ability to pull down a true hemshech, a true connection. An extension, mikdusha to yisbarach from God's kedusha, the yis atru bo, and we can become crowned with that hemshech, with that extension of God's kedusha, but open in a manner shekol bechinoteim, that all aspects. I, Steve, do you hear us? Good. We don't hear you. You're muted, but that's okay. But as long as you hear us, that's fine. Good. Actually, it's better to stay muted until you want to speak. Otherwise, we get a lot of bounce back. So no, let no, me. I can hear you. Okay. And do you have where we are? No, so I, I, I just have posted to... it in the chat. Okay. Okay. And the chat and, and that link will take you to chapter six. But then you need to scroll down to paragraph seven, which deals with tefillin. That's what we just started I, now. There, and we there started. In the book. I'm sorry? There in the book. Okay. I've Perfect. So page three. If you have the same book as I, then it's 314. Oh, I thought it was 592. 314. Wait, which book do you have? We have a different um, book. This one here. Okay, what that's a different the, one than, than what I have. Yeah, so it's it's, okay. it's part okay. four, chapter six, paragraph seven. Wherever you are, that's where you've got it. Got it. So the tefillin we said is far greater than the tzitzit. The tefillin is called a davar shebe kedusha. It's a matter of kedusha as opposed to a davar shebe mitzvah, as opposed to a matter of a mitzvah. Tzitzit, when they're no longer usable, they can be discarded, albeit respectfully, they can be discarded. Tefillin is a davar shebe kedusha, a matter of kedusha. It cannot. What is the? What does the tefillin do? It is mamshich aleim. It brings down upon us an extension of God's kedusha. And we crown ourselves with that. They open in the manner that all of our aspects, our spiritual and physical aspects, are all connected. That we are all under this tremendous light. 
the Yutuknu Bo Tikkun Gadol. And this brings about a tremendous change, rectification in who and what we are. As the Pasuk says, Humasham Rakatuv, Vra'u Ko'ame Ya'aretz, all the nations of the world will see, Kishem Hashem Nikrai Lecha, that the name of God is called upon you. And what is that referring to? Which mitzvah do we have that allows them all to see the name of God is upon us? And that concept of everyone seeing the name of God is upon us is connected to this mitzvah of tefillin in all of the halachot and all of its details. Right, as we mentioned before, um, well, a couple of things, and then we'll see, all right, just add in a few things. The tefillin goes on the head by the brain. It goes by the arm next to the heart, and it goes onto the arm, onto the weaker arm. And this represents, and of course, the tefillin has our Jewish Pledge of Allegiance, the Shema Yisrael, two parshio, two paragraphs of the Shema, and the two other places, the total of four places, where tefillin is mentioned in the Torah. So we're taking that Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elkein Hashem Echad, that pledge, and we're saying we accept that intellectually. We accept that emotionally by our heart, and it goes onto our arm, and we not just going to talk the talk, but we will walk the walk. The arm is our actions. So intellectually, emotionally, and we put it into play. It goes on to Yad Ka, Yad Ka, which is Yad Keha, the weaker arm. If we're, those who are righties wear it on the left arm, those who are lefties wear it on their right arm. And an idea that I heard about the weaker arm is that we recognize that when it comes to actions, we could do our best, but ultimately we need the help from Hashem in order to succeed in any and all of the different endeavors that we have. Also, the idea of tefillin, he's saying that it's bringing down this ore, and it's a very beautiful concept. We often say that in Judaism, we do our beliefs. We don't just, I believe, but we do our beliefs. We do our belief in God as a creator. So if God's a creator, on the seventh day, he ceased to create, to alter the world. So therefore, every seventh day, we do our belief in the creator of a world on Shabbat that we cease to alter the world according to our needs and we cease to create, right? Now, we also have an understanding that every time we do a mitzvah, then we become surrounded by the Kedusha of God. Every time that we do a mitzvah, we can't see it, right? There are those people who can see the aura, that's the, that we all exude an aura. Well, when we're doing a mitzvah, we are enveloped in the Kedusha, the holiness of God. So tefillin is the way we do our belief that when we do a mitzvah, we are enveloped by God. Because in tefillin, what do we do? We wrap ourselves with God's name. We have, we have the shin. On the tefillin shel rosh, also we make a shin with the wrapping of the of of, of of the straps on our hand. We have the dalid by the by by the kesha, the knot in the back of the tefillin shel rosh, and we have a yud by the kesha by the knot of the hand tefillin. So we are literally wrapping ourselves in God's name, which is this concept that whenever we do a mitzvah, tefillin represents that concept of enveloping ourselves in God's name, in more Kabbalistic terms, as he puts it, it is Yimashei or Hazeh. It's bringing this or this light down onto us. The Amnam. Shnei Eivarim Rashiim Nimsei Ba'adam. There are two main parts of the human body. Uvahem HaNeshama Mitgaberet Tigboret Gadol, where the Neshama, the soul, has its full strength. The Haim Hamoach Vahalev. That is the brain, the mind, and the lave and the heart. Right? Those are the two on a biological level, those are the two primary engines of the human body keeping us alive. And that correlates on a spiritual level 
to the areas of emotion and the areas of knowledge. So therefore God commanded us that this light that's brought down will extend El HaMoach Tchila, first to the Moach, to the brain, Al Yidei through via the Tfila Shel Rosh, the head Tfilin, the Yutukan Bo HaMoach Vaneshema Shebo, which will then bring this rectification, this enlightenment, this uplifting to the Moach, to the brain, and the Neshama, and the parts of the Neshama that, so to speak, reside there. Bi Pashet Achakach Al Halei, and then it goes down to the heart, that through the tefillah shel yad, and that brings this light, this rectification, also to that aspect. And then as a result, the person has this hemshech, this extension of this holiness, and one is crowned, umit kadesh, and we become sanctified, kedusha rabba, a tremendous, tremendous kedusha. When I was uh, teaching at a yeshiva in Israel, so we brought a bunch of the boys um, to see the stipler Rav Zatzal, who was a big uh, Tamil Chacham Tzadik who lived in B'nai Brach. And he, he was so, so um, vision impaired that you used to write something down for him and he used to take it and, and read it like that, right? That's how his vision was so, so poor. At the same time, he had vision that none of us had. And one time, one time some boys went to him and he said, you're not wearing, you're not wearing your tzitzit. They're standing across the room. You're not wearing tzitzit. So they said, uh, Rebbe, it's nighttime. At nighttime, you're not obligated. And he said, you didn't wear it today either. <laughs> right? So he couldn't see physically, but there is a sensitivity. There is a certain Kedusha. And that's by Tzitzit, as he said at the beginning of number seven, the Tefillin is far greater than the Tzitzit. So our eyes don't sense the difference that comes over a person who, while they're wearing, or who has worn the tefillin. But there is mitkadesh kedusha raba. There is a great, great holiness that envelops a person. And Robin, for you, this means that women don't need this. They have this holiness without needing the tefillin to be, to be the hemshech, to be the extender. That women Kind of like their- we don't have to. Kind of like we don't meet, need a minion. We can pray anywhere, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. The Amnam. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait Shonim. Nimsin. Yes, Uzi? I was wondering if there's a prohibition for women to put the feeling on. So that's very interesting. Uh, um, thank you. That's very interesting. L- l- let me just finish this paragraph and, and then let me deal with that. Okay? The details of the different aspects are all found in all the conditions of the mitzvah, meaning each aspect of the mitzvah, the way it needs to be shaped, and it's four bottom of the head, and one, it's four separate compartments on the head tefillin. It's one compartment on the hand tefillin, and how it needs to be sewn. All these details all align with these different Hamshachat Kedusha, these different extensions of Kedusha. You know, people say, you know, well, what difference does it, does it really make a difference? Right? So, so what they used to say years ago was, you know, in a transistor radio, you know, if you have just one thing off a little bit, guess what? You're not getting the reception, right? It's not coming down. You know, now we say, you know, if in the whole email address, if, you, if you're missing one period, one little dot, what happens? It doesn't connect. It doesn't. It doesn't go through. Yes, in our world we see little things do make a difference. All these all add up to complete this tikkun, this rectification, which comes down to all of its aspects. 
according to all the different aspects of what a human being is. So Uzi asked about women wearing tefillin. So in general, women are exempt from mitzvat asay shahazman grama. Women are exempt from the positive time bound mitzvot. And we mentioned before, men have nothing in their body which is time bound. Women themselves are a time bound mitzvah. Women have their cycle, their menstrual cycle. They are already aligned with, with time. Who's the have to be? Sorry. No, no, I was going to say it's not just time bound, it's time bound. Time what? Bomb. Women are a time bomb, not just time a bound. Time bomb. Okay, Uzi. <laughs> Uzi, don't make me have to edit the recording, okay? Don't go, don't get me in trouble. That, that adds a lot of work for me. Okay. So, so normally, in general, if a woman wants to fulfill the time bound, the time bound mitzvah, right? She can. And there's a famous toast vote in the Gemara Kedushin who learns out and and they can also make a bracha on it even though it's hard for them to say we were commanded right but it means Yisrael as a whole was commanded so that's why very often you'll see women with a lulav and an etrog and and very much right, almost all women have accepted upon themselves to hear the shofar on rosh hashanah shofar on rosh hashanah is certainly a positive time-bound mitzvah but the women all come to hear that. So women in general, if they want to observe sitting in a sukkah is a positive time-bound mitzvah that women are actually exempt from, right? But they want to do it and they do it. Beautiful. They're encouraged to do it. And they make a bracha. They make the blessing that you commanded us lay shave to sit in the sukkah. Tefillin though, it's interesting. The Ramah in Hilchas Tefillin says that one should protest when it comes to women wearing tefillin, right? And let's understand why we would differentiate, right? Famously, we've heard that Rashi's daughters wore tefillin, but why should we differentiate between tefillin and sukkah, shofar, and the other mitzvot where women are, you know, certainly allowed to and often encouraged to do so? Aren't women, aren't women women not allowed to aren't women not allowed to wear like men they're not supposed to wear men's clothes right okay okay so, so is robin, that part of it the robin okay. is suggesting that that might be considered you know a beged ish the garment of a man whereas a shofar is not okay the argument can be made it's not, that's a nice idea robin the argument can be made it's not really a garment but but, but an, an understanding that that i have in it is as follows Tefillin can be worn, should be worn, or meant to be worn the entire day. We don't wear it the entire day. Why don't we wear it the entire day? Because tefillin demands a certain focus, and your mind can't be wandering elsewhere. Our minds are always wandering elsewhere, especially when it comes to Shemona Esrei, the Amidah, right? That's when the floodgates open and our mind wanders all over the universe. And that's why if a person didn't have tefillin by shacharit, he doesn't just put it on at the first available time. He'll wait until mincha. Why? Because the hope is that when one is davening, then hopefully they'll be able to stay focused and their mind won't go wandering off as, as much as we can. I'm in no way saying that a man's wa mind wanders less than a woman's on the contrary probably a man's mind wanders more than a woman's but we are limited so when it, for a man when it comes to tefillin we've got this this trade-off on one hand we have an obligation to wear it on the other hand our mind wanders all over the place we don't have the proper kavanah the proper focus so therefore because we have these two competing values these two competing ideas what do we do we wear it for a short period of time while we are davening when it comes to women right there's no 
concentration, focus that a person has when they're shaking a lulav, when they're sitting in a sukkah, when they're listening to the shofar. But when it comes to tefillin, it is a Dava Shebe Like we mentioned, we're wrapping ourselves in God's name. We're bringing down all of this, this extension of God's presence. And if our mind is wandering elsewhere, that's a problem. Men don't have a choice. We're obligated. God said, wear tefillin. We're commanded. We have to wear tefillin. So we do wear the tefillin for that period of time when we're davening, either shachar, if we miss that at mincha, and then we take it off. Women don't have those competing values. They don't have that obligation to offset the fact that it's very hard for anyone to have the proper focus and concentration while they're wearing the tefillin. And that's an explanation that I heard why specifically by tefillin, the Ramah says, of Moshe Isulis, which is the Ashkena- uh, on the Shulchan Aruch, he says that one, that, that one should protest when, when women are, uh, right, protest that women should not be wearing tefillin. Can I start one related question on tefillin? Sure. Why why is it that uh, some are machmir to cover up the shell yad uh, rather than leaving it exposed? And does that tie into what we're discussing? Yeah. Um, the reason why I did not understand the question, to be honest. Steve asked, and there is such an inyan to cover over the tefillin shell yad to cover over the hand tefillin. Besides the protective box that goes on, right? But, the, right, but, but that protective box is kind of is needed because we do cover it over with a sweater or a shirt or a jacket or something like that. So, you know, I, I'm not recalling exactly why that is. I will look into that, Steve. Just curious, yeah. thank you. The, the, the head tefillin was, was specifically not supposed to cover. Because there it says, V'ra'u kol ha-me'aretz, like the post we had above, that all the nations will see Hashem's name is called upon you. Right? But by the... But, I think by the Yad, for some, it was supposed, it's supposed to be for you. It's supposed to be for you as a sign. Meaning more as a private right. sign. But I, 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 let, 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 me, let me look into that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I had a situation of a person, a woman came wanting to wear a tefillin, and and I told her that, you know, here and uh, here, you know, the women don't wear a tefillin. So she said, well, you know, it's, well, it's my minog to wear a tefillin. So, so I said to her, you know, in Israel, some people have the custom to, well, some people have the custom to wear their tefillin on chalamoed. Others have the custom to not wear tefillin on chalamoed. Right. In Israel, they don't wear tefillin on Chalam Moed. So if I'm visiting Israel and I do wear tefillin on Chalam Moed, I respect the custom of that place. and I don't wear my tefillin. And when I get home, I put on my tefillin. And I said, I think that would be, you know, an appropriate path for you to take. If, you know, you say it's your custom to wear tefillin, that's your prerogative. If here the custom is not, that women don't wear tefillin, so then here we should honor the custom here not to wear tefillin. And if it's your cousin to wear tefillin, when you go home, you should put on your tefillin, similar to one who wears tefillin on Cholomoed when they are in Israel. Great solution. Okay. How did she react? Because, um, you know, said, some, people just, just, some not, people just want to make a point, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the Neshea yeah. Kotel. All right. I said, good, good. I said it to her very respectfully, right? I have a, a, a nice, friendly relationship with her, and I hope she took it well. You know, I, you know, I, I've got to, I've got to do what I've got to do, and to try to do it in a, in as pleasant a way as I can. But I've got to you do did. what I need to do. Yeah. You did. Vihine, let's go to eight. Chet. We are commanded to wear this crown all the days, besides the holy days, be it Shabbat, be it Yom Tov, 
And that's why there are different customs when it comes to Chol HaMoe, the intermediary days, right? Is the emphasis on the Chol or on the Moe, right? Because we'll see in a moment, Shehem Atzmam Ot Li Yisrael, right? The Tefillin are meant to be a sign that God is upon us. Well, those days serve as an oath, as a sign. They are themselves, right? Ot Hibein we say about Shabbos. Shabbos is an oath, is our sign. Umit Sidam Mit Atrim, Yisrael, Rehem. And therefore Shabbat descends upon us and crowns us with its crown. Beli Hishtad Lut Acher without us needing to put on this crown to have this crown of God upon us, Shabbos is the crown. Right? It's interesting. On Rosh Chodesh, we take off our tefillin before Musaf. And the reason for that is really based on the Sephardic Nusach, because they say, Keter Yitnu Lecha. Right? Hashem, their Kedusha begins with Keter Yitnu Lecha. Malachi, right, right? A, a crown is given to you. So we're getting that crown. We're not wearing our own crown when Hashem is giving us that crown. That's how we take off. And, and again, Rosh Chodesh is sort of a quasi day, right? Similar to Chol the, the, There we wear it. We make a bracha. Chol you don't make a bracha. There we do wear it. But each of these holy days is its own keter, is its own atara, is its own crown. Masha'in came, which is not the case, Shar Hayamim, other days, other non Kodesh days, non Shabbat, non holidays, Shi'ev Shala Sigayiturim, one cannot attain this crown, this spiritual crown, this aura, Elad Vishtad Lutazet, only through making this effort, taking these steps of the Tfilin. The Gam Achar Hayshtad Lutazmo, Ein malata yitor musag bo kamalata yitor hanimshach me love me akodesh. And even after our efforts of wearing our tefillin to bring this kedusha aura, holiness aura, crown onto us, that crown is not the same level as the crown that comes on its own be hakodesh during these holy days of Shabbos and Yom Tovim. It is far lesser crown than the Shabbat crown aura, than the Yom Tov crown aura. Amnam hatavrim kulam b'chol buleyem mishoarim. But all of these things are exactly, very precisely measured. Minachachmah el Yonah from the wisdom above. Kafi mashehu hayoter naot whatever is the most fitting, the most proper. So that our tefillin with our efforts brings this certain level and that Shabbat brings without tefillin on its own, Shabbat and Yom Tov brings a greater aura. All of that is, is decided from up above. Vihine, paragraph nine. Achar hayot adam mitsuyan. When a person is now mitsuyan, when he is, um, what's a good word for that, Uzi? Mitsuyan bitsitsit, right? He is glorified with those tzitzit, umutar, and he is crowned with his tefillin. Nitkanulo sidre hatfila. Then, when a person is in such a state, then we have arranged, ordered, structured the structure of tefillah, that that will bring about the tikkun, the rectification, the changes on a person, the changes in the world. And the kavana, the intent in general is to establish this entire world, call ha'olamot, and all of the worlds, right? We know, in, in Kabbalistically speaking, we say that there is on the top, olam ha'atzilut, the world of godliness, then olam ha'bria, of creation, olam yitzira, formation, 
and olam asiya, the world of doing, that's us down over here. So this is what brings about these tikkunim, these, these, I always think like a, like a, uh, a chiropractor. They go, <clears throat> and all of a sudden, ah, uh, there's this alignment. I've never been to one. That's what I heard about. Right? All of a sudden, there's this alignment, and everything feels good. So all of these actions are there to bring about this alignment, that there can be this flow of Kedusha working its way down. He's mentioned a number of times this idea of the chain of each level linking to the one above it. Rabbi, so that there's no... Down, just to Rabbi, 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 Right? In the state that is then fitting, that they can now receive this influence, this enlightenment, this holiness, from that which is above it, to extend this influence all the way up from God, Alehem, down onto us, into our world, according to the degree that it is needed. Yes, Uzi. Um, you asked about Mitzuyan, it took me time to uh, <laughs> unmute. But uh, there's no direct translation. Best I could do is distinguished. When a person like is distinguished. That. I like that. So now that we are in this distinguished state with our tzitzit and the crown, very nice, Uzi. Thank you. I like that. Ulam, number 10, Yud. Klal hatfila, the general, the whole sum of tfila, of the morning tfila, mitchalek is divided la arba'a chalakim. To four different parts. Harishon, the first one is karbanot, sacrifices that we we read the Mishnayot and the Psukim that discuss the sacrifices. Hasheni, the second is Psuke de Zimra, literally the, the, the verses of song, which is mostly taken from Tehillim and other parts of Tanakh, praises to God. Hashlishi, Kriyat Shema, Ubir Choteha. The third part, as we are ascending, is the Kriyat Shema, the reading of the Shema, and in the morning, the brachot, the two brachot before, and one bracha, one blessing afterwards. Haravi'i, and then fourth is Hatfila, the Tfila, the Amida, Uma Shela Achareha, and that which comes after it. And now he's going to say how these are, well, we'll see. These are aligned to the different worlds that we are seeking to, to align and to connect to. Hakarbanot. Hakavanabahem bichlal hula taher haolam kulo. The focus of, of, of the karbanot is to purify this entire world. Ulahasir mimana, and to remove from it kol mashu ikub uminiya, whatever stands in the way, whatever is an obstacle or miniya that withholds el biat hashefah el yombo, this flow of from above down onto us. I, I always say, you know, myself, I imagine others also, right? To us, we don't really have an appreciation of the of the holiness of sacrifices. To us, in our world, it it sounds a bit gory. And um, in the Musaf, we speak clearly about this being reinstated. And I always say that along with it being reinstated, there's going to need to be a a renewed um, appreciation. Of, of the Kedusha, of the holiness of the Karbanot. But on a certain level, the Karban, you know, we live in a world and everything seems really concrete and really, uh, but it's so much that actually is an illusion, right? This person got angry at me and, right? But actually this was simply a challenge for me that's being sent to me, like on an audition, how is Cena going to deal with this situation? And, and that's what we're constantly, constantly 
being faced with. And the ideal is when we're able to sort of see through all this and see the, the, the hand of God in all that's going on and, and have that perspective. And, and one thing that a carbon does is it takes this living, breathing animal. And of course, the animal is first slaughtered, right? And then what happens? It goes up in smoke. And all of a sudden, this that which this which was reality becomes becomes nothing. And in a way, it it lets us realize just how you know. Even I'm always fascinated, right? From a physics point of view, the majority of any atom is is empty space. All right, you have your proton and neutron in the middle, your electrons going around. So everything that we touch that seems to be of substance actually is mostly empty space, right? You know, a person could actually, you know, in a matrix kind of way, you know, make their way through there. Right? You know, if they could only avoid all those electrons, right, they're through. So it, it's fascinating to me that from a physics point of view, actually most of this world is is emptiness right the world that we know and you go outside the world we know and the vast majority is i think physicists now say is dark matter dark right black holes what are black holes nothingness with a gravitational pull so strong that it makes everything it sucks everything in and turns it into nothingness so to a degree, perhaps a carbon is, is is to let us recognize that all of the reality we see is um, is fair is is pretty much surreal. So the carbonote they come to taher haolam kulo to purify this world and to remove all of those obstacles for the shefa. Psuke de zimra, the psuke de zimra ha kavana behem bichlau legalot or panav yitbarach. That is to show, to reveal the galo, to reveal the light of God's face, so to speak, through these praises that we praise and we tell of His glory, of His praises. Right, and that is to connect, to connect. Um, and that's when God said that this comes about through our saying these psukim. Right, the blessing that we say by psuke de zimra is habocher b'shirei zimra melech kel olamim. That God is bocher b'shirei zimra. That God chooses these songs of zimra. And that is bringing us up to the next level. Kriyachma birchateha, Kriyachma and its blessings. Kvar be arnu in yanam bichlau. He spent a whole section on that. That was, I think, section section four. This is section six. Umilva mashbiyanu bichlau dehem odin ancher. Besides all that we spoke about Shema in and of itself. There's another aspect. The different levels of creation and how each one is this shalshalit is this is this chain that interlinks interlinks and makes its way down that we explained earlier. Everything comes in these steps from there spiritual roots as they make their way down all the way to us. We've, we've given the parable that the Nefesh Chaim gives, right? So in, in a gym, you have a, a rope hanging from the ceiling. And if you shake that rope, what happens? It works its way up to the top. And then that movement works its way back down to us. V'ulam, Gazra Chachma Yona, the supreme wisdom, the highest wisdom decreed, in order for us to receive this influence, 
you we need to we can't leapfrog we can't jump up we need to connect ourselves to that which is right above us and that works its way up like we said and then works its way back down right from down up the lower to the upper and the upper to the even higher until we reach the spiritual roots at the highest point. And they are connected to God. And they get this influence, this enlightenment from God. And then, and then it works its way down. All the levels. And that is why each of the lower aspects, us being down here, we get that that which we can and that which we need. These blessings of Shema, Sudru al Razim Ha'ela, they are all based upon these Kabbalistic concepts, secrets. And through that praise, Mitalot Madregot Habria, then we it ascends Milamata Lamala from down up above, Adhit Kashera Kov Majagatoli until it reaches the highest level, the Aznik Shara Kovanik Lebari Zwarak, connect to God, and then it works its way down. And that's what's done in the Tfilat Shmona Esrei. So each of these four aspects, components of Tfila are lifting us up to these different points until we reach that atzil, until we reach that that highest of the level. I'll just share with, with, with something quickly and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll conclude. Something that, that I came across in the Nevesh HaChayim, we say that Tfila stands Barumo Shalom at the height of the world. And he explains that, that the words of Tfila, they get to that flashpoint between the physical world and the spiritual world. And they serve as that conduit that connects these different worlds. So something that I, that I try to do, I don't have enough time to do it because everyone's waiting for me. But I, I found when I'm saying this from an esray, I point to each word and then I kind of lift my finger as I say each word. And, and, and to, to try to give myself this sense that I, I'm releasing that word from the paper and sending it up on its mission to do what it needs to do to make those connections for the world. The problem is it takes me too long. And then people, you know, I, I can't keep everybody waiting. Everyone's got to get to work in the morning. But at least for the first brach, I try to, to lift up each word. And, and that's what's happening with the tefillah. The tefillah is, is, is allowing these connections, connections, connections up to the top. And then that works its way back down to us. Okay. Shakur. Shakur, everybody. We'll call it over here. Steve, are you are you in house? Where are you? Still down in still in Los Angeles, but uh Israel Hashem within a month we'll be there. Okay, very good. Steve, are you are you related to Lawrence Tabik? Funny you should mention that. I've never heard of him. Uh, all <laughs> right. Not related. All right. Okay. <laughs> At least not that I know of. All right. Okay. Regards everybody. All right, take care everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. And Thank you. Pass tomorrow, everybody. Uh, um, Rabbi um, yeah. Dalit said, I, I texted her and she said she's sorry she couldn't make it tonight, but